Welcome back. Now, Stats SA has released its latest retail sales data. The data shows that South Africa's retail sales fell 0.9% year on year in November 2023. Consumers spent a lot less at hardware, paint and glass dealers, making these retailers' largest negative contributors to the data. Sipamand Lamkwana is a senior economist at FNB, joins us now to unpack the print in greater detail. Thank you so much for your time, Sipamand. Now, we did have a reduction in retail sales in November year on year, but uh, they did rise on a monthly basis between October and November. But actually, just to put that in context, because we know that November is a Black Friday month, uh, and of course, looking at it year on year, it means that Black Friday was uh, more subdued uh, in 2023 than in 2022. But even that 0.4% rise month on month wasn't significant, right? Yeah, no, definitely. It was not significant. Um, to It was not enough to reverse the decline that we experienced in the pre Yes, month. The previous month, on a month on month basis, we declined by about 1.4%. Now, that does imply that um, the retail trade industry is probably going to contribute negatively to the fourth quarter GDP growth, which is in line with general expectations that, you know, there was just general weakness in economic activity in the fourth quarter of the year. I mean, you also see that when you look at um, sentiment indicators that did predict that. Consumers were relatively sub, were relatively depressed going into the festive season of 2023. We saw, for example, with the FNBB, our Consumer Confidence Index, um, declining to negative 17 um, index points, which is the lowest um, reading for a festive season in about 20 years. So that does tell you that consumers going into the festive season the, the um, festive season last year were not um, were not um, very confident um, about about the state of their finances. Yeah, and actually, I mean, as we're talking about that month on month increase as well, let's not forget, um, of course, as you mentioned, that in October uh, we did have a decline of one point four percent. Does this spell bad news um, in the absence of Black Friday and promotional activity, and maybe bring about an environment where we're going to have to have continued promotional activity in the retail sector? It does imply that it does imply that you know um, retailers are going to have to um, continuously uh, provide incentives for consumers, you know, to put their hands in their pockets, um, you know, um, and, and then with. Without Black Friday, I think we would have seen, you know, a a, a much more subdued um, uh, print for November. We did think that um, the decline, the, the significant decline on a month-on-month -month basis in October was as a result of consumers delaying their purchases. But the the, the partial recovery in, in 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 November suggests that it might just be um, um, issues broader than just delaying um, the, 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 their purchases. I mean, it's not, it's not that surprising given um, the sticky inflation that consumers are currently experiencing, the high interest rate environment, and generally, as I mentioned, the depressed um, consumer sentiment. Um, I, I do also think that, um, you know, the, 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 we, although we experienced a, a sizable cut in, 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 in fuel prices in November, generally you would expect that, you know, consumers would just channel that into spending. It did not happen this time around. I do think that it might have been influenced by the fact that before that we saw also sizable increases in 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 in, in, in fuel prices for two for two consecutive months leading in leading to um, November. So consumers going into the festive season last year were not really um, confident about their finances. Yeah, it's quite an interesting point because I, I think also in November it did come across my uh, in October it did come across uh, my mind that you know what maybe consumers are holding off for Black Friday month. But it's quite interesting that you say that even that rise wasn't enough to counteract the reduction that we did see in October. Now, of course, unpacking, uh, you know, that print in terms of the uh, different retailers, the, the, you know, negative contributors and the uh, positive contributors, we did have, uh, you know, the, the retailers in hardware, paint and glass being the common, uh, uh, rather consistent negative contributor there, no matter what period uh, you're looking at. And I'm wondering if at this point there's just no light at the end of the tunnel for that specific retail sector. Look, um, that that retail sector did perform extraordinarily uh, extraordinarily good yeah. um, um, post COVID, especially yeah. 2021 and some parts of 2022, and that was a as a result of us, as you can see, you know, converting our homes into um, into working spaces, yeah. um, and so it did support um, that, um, that 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 sector of um, of of the retail sales. 
for industry. Um, I do think that we're probably going to see some support as soon as we see sizable cuts in interest rate because I mean this is kind of a discretionary kind of this is discretionary um, kind of spending and that spending generally moves um, in tandem with with, with, with with interest rates. And also, um, this is happening even though we are seeing inflation in that sector, not doing, it's not, it's not, it's not heating up, yeah. so to speak. Um, and um, under those circumstances, you would expect that consumers would take advantage of those of those low prices. But at this, at this instance, um, consumers are just saying that we're probably going to delay this, this discretionary income with more rather focus on, um, on the essentials um, given the environment that we find ourselves in. Yeah, I mean, just as you're talking about, you know, um, consumers, obviously, as soon as we get interest rate cuts, now they'll be channeling, uh, you know, that extra disposable income maybe into the sector. But also, would we not be too optimistic to forecast that for next year? Maybe we'll start seeing a significant uh, boost in that maybe in 2025 because they're also the lag effects of inflation and still the, you know, tight monetary policy. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. In fact, um, if, if, if I were just to paint a picture of, of our prognosis going into 2025, yeah. we're probably going to muddle through, muddle around um, on, in the near term yeah. um, with consumers, you know, especially with, um, you know, a, a number, a, a series of event risks um, that are coming up. I mean, we've got elections, not just in South Africa, but across the, across the world. We have got, um, um, you know, um, rising geopolitical tensions which might affect you know um, volatility of, of or the stability of, of, of the currency mm -hmm. it might just complicate the, the the declining trend in inflation so there are a lot of event risks especially in the next six months mm -hmm. um we do think that um we are going to see our first cut first reduction in interest rate only in the second half um, of the year after which these are, start, are going to start you know um, are going to start um, benefiting from that cut you are absolutely right that uh, you know in the short term we're probably not going to see that benefit as yet it is going to show itself much more in in 2025 but it's probably going to start somewhere in the second half of the year yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see that fourth quarter GDP print uh, to see if uh, we will actually land up in a technical recession in South, South Africa. As you mentioned, you know, retailers will uh, contribute uh, less to that GDP print. Uh, so we will we'll, we'll be looking out for that. Thank you so much for your time and for your insights today, Sipamandla. Uh, that was FNB senior economist Sipamandla Mkwanazi.